Hi, this video will take you through the installation of a pair of underwater LED lights. I put the fast forwarded version of the second light installation at the beginning of the video, so if you don't have a full 11 minutes to watch the entire video, this first portion will give you an overview of what the installation looked like. It was pretty straightforward, it was easy, they came out really great, and at the end of the video, there is some footage of what the boat looks like both on the trailer and in the water. So be sure to check that out. I hope you enjoy and thanks for watching. Today we're going to install two more underwater lights. We installed two yesterday, they came out so great that I have decided to put two more on. So I'll walk you through the installation. Here's our supplies today. Pretty simple. We've got, uh, of course we're going to need a drill. We need the uh, larger half inch drill bit to clear the uh, wire port on the back of the lights. Uh, some waterproof connectors. I'm going to use some 5200 Fast Cure. Uh, just to uh, get it to set up quicker. <clears throat> also, we're going to use a uh, countersink bit which will uh, clear the gel coat so we don't have any cracking. You can do that with a bigger bit if you don't have one of these. And then we're going to use the uh, West Marine Bay Blazer lights. I'm really limited for space when it comes to additional switches. So what I decided to do was put in a double rocker for the bilge switch. So currently, we flip it up, and the bilge comes on. Well, now when we flip it down, the underwater lights come on. It's not labeled, but this was, I thought, the best compromise uh, with not having to put a new switch in. So the first thing I need to do is figure out uh, how far down I can go before I go too low. And I run out of space down here because there's some thickness for the hull that we have to compensate for. So the way I decided to do that is to lay this board here and we're going to measure down to the bottom, to the bottom of the locker. And when I measure down 14 and a half inches on this side, I know that anything above this point will be above. So you'll see the other compensation we need to make is uh, side to side. So you can see the edge of the hull on the side here there's some thickness there and we can kind of gauge that by by how th thick the wall appears to be when you measure the top of the deck as it compares to the edge of the hull so if we mount this light somewhere between three and four inches in and high enough so that the light does not hit the trim tab bracket we should be good. I'm going to do some final measurements and try to get this down as far as possible and out as far as possible to make the light pattern the best it can be in com combination with this other light. This is an inside look. The other thing I want to be careful of is I don't puncture that hydraulic line or snag any of these wires. Okay, I've got my, my spot marked where I'm going to drill. You can see I raised it slightly because I ran into the risk of the edge of the light hitting the edge of this bracket. So I moved it up just slightly to compensate for that. I want to keep it as low <coughs> to the water as I can get. You can see this mark right here is about where my water line is. Uh, so I'm um, certainly underwater when I'm at rest. It should illuminate the water out around the edge here really nicely. And then this light will illuminate the rest of it. And I think we have enough of a spread where the light will converge and, and look like uh, uh, you know, be spread evenly across the transom. So I'm pretty excited to see how this will turn out. 
Uh, I measured and remeasured uh, off of the board that we put in. So if you remember, it was about 14, a little over 14 inches before the, uh, the, the shelf, and when I bring the tape measure down level with the hole, I'm at uh, right around 12 inches. So I will absolutely be safe. I'm going to drill uh, up and, and uh, to an upward and inward angle. Uh, so I, I'm sure those wires will clear anything uh, located in there. And as planned, it came through exactly where we wanted it to, right there on the transom. So good news. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark the holes, uh, drill the holes, uh, the full length of the screw. I'm also going to countersink the holes and I'll show you that and that way we won't get any spider cracking on the gel coat coming out from the screw holes. They are really close to the edge as you can see. I had to drop this trim tab down so that I could get the right angle on the drill so I stayed perpendicular to the transom. This was pretty easy okay. and it'll make all three screws sit properly. Easy. Slightly, slightly open up that hole. This super simple step will prevent any kind of spider cracks from coming out around the edges of these screw holes. It's also a good idea to take a vacuum and, and clean these larger countersink holes also provide some area for a little extra sealant to sit, so we're sure not to get any water in these screw holes. I'm not going to put any sealant in this center hole until after I get the wires in. I'm going to try to get these wires as close as I can without touching, without touching the hole. Angle it down just a bit. There we go. Perfect. Hold it just like that. I'm going to squirt as much as I can to, in there. Some of it will come through on the other side, which is just fine. Go ahead and push that in and line these holes up. See where those two holes are? There you go. And we'll press it in the middle. There you go. Done. All right. That sealant will hold that there until I get the screws in. And then we'll clean up everything that squirts out. And uh, the external portion of this installation will be done. Squeeze them down uh, pretty evenly. Otherwise, I'll get sealant. I'll get sealant coming out unevenly. Okay, all the screws are tight. I do like to have a, a full roll of paper towels without any seal, without any solvent or anything. And uh, after about half a roll of paper towels, we'll have uh, no sealant anywhere. It'll be nice and clean. Okay, that was pretty simple. As you can see, I've removed as much of the sealant as I can. The idea is not to have too much. Here's a view on the inside. As you can see, that hole is uh, nicely filled with sealant. Only a little bit of the 5200 came through. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just fill the rest of that hole with sealant. On the inside of this brochure, there happens to be a template. I have to admit, I didn't realize this was here until I uh, went to cut my own template. I'm going to uh, go ahead and cut that out and use it to double check. I used the template to locate the spot that I installed the second light. This way both sides look exactly the same. Okay, I did want to show you what I did here on the inside. Uh, same as the other side, went ahead and, and put uh, some sealant in there. And uh, also I went ahead and wire tied the wires up here uh, temporarily. I'll clean that up later. but. I want to uh, let the sealant cure in this position so that uh, there's no cracking or, or anything sticking out when, uh, when I go to move the wires later. That's pretty much it. Uh, installation complete. I'll go ahead and tap into these, uh, to these wires that are existing that I ran yesterday. Uh, just simple positive and negative connections. And then of course uh, I did run a new wire right up front to the dash and uh, utilized an existing ground back here at the transom. So uh, pretty simple. I'll uh, get this cleaned up and, and get out on the water tonight and uh, shoot some video of, of the result here. Okay, we're here at the ramp. This is what everything looks like at night. I installed uh, this remote recently. Pretty happy with the way that came out. I also installed uh, two courtesy lights, one there and two on the front. There's another one on the other side of the console. And uh, for fishing at night, they really light everything up nicely.
Here's a view of the boat with the floodlights on. There's one up underneath the pulling platform, another on the front of the center console. They're both LED. They produce about 150 watts to 200 watts each. They light up the boat really well, hardly use any power. And uh, we use these when we catch uh, larger fish and really need to see. Here's a closer view. And um, coming into view is the underwater lights that we just installed. The water is really, really dark, so we're not getting the full effect that we would in clearer water. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the installation. Here's a view up on the trailer. As you can see, I selected the blue option. Come around the corner here and uh, you'll see how bright they are. As I mentioned, the water here in the river this time of year is so dark that we're not getting the full effect. We need to get the boat down to the keys up against some white sandy bottom in clear water and we'll really be able to see uh, the full effect of these lights. Overall, uh, once again, I'm really happy that I did this installation and thanks so much for watching.